So hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Today we're going to be looking at the Pow Kiddy X17 and how it performs. Um, is it any good? Let's have a look. Okay guys, welcome to Crazy Burger again. So, this is the box that came, comes in there, the Pow Kiddy X17. It's nothing particularly special, just a box. There's nothing really in it apart from the unit and a charge cable and a little instruction booklet. Um, the instruction booklet is pretty basic, some Chinese and English. So these are the actual stats of the unit. I mean, I'll put them on the screen anyway so you can actually see them better. But it's a 7 inch screen which is massively impressive. Um, it's got tons of buttons, got a 5000 milliamp battery, um, it's quite light, 405 grams, and the thing that's looked so disappointing to me is the process, it's only a, it's a quad core 8364 bit processor with 1.3 gigahertz, which is a little bit um, underpowered in comparison to a lot of other emulation devices recently. Um, yeah, but let's have a little look at it so you can get an idea. So this is the actual unit itself. We've got the, the volume buttons down here. You've got this really awful D-pad that's quite squeaky. I like the the um as you can see the the analog stick is really good. So that's much preferable to play the games with rather than this pretty darn god awful D-pad. Um and you've got your on-off switches which is here, which turns it on and off, and you've got this gaming so a button here which sort of brings up an in-game menu. You've got select and start, A, B, X, Y. These are quite cool, they actually light up uh, when you're playing. And if you look on the back here we have your sort of uh, shoulder buttons, L1, R1, R2. And they're quite good, they're quite cool. So these are all your connections. So there's nothing actually on the back apart from um, two speakers either side which I think the placement of these are actually quite surprising because when you're actually holding the new the unit, um, you kind of cover them a little bit, so it kind of muffles the sound slightly, which is a bit unusual. I think it'd have been better for them maybe up the top somewhere or even sort of down here, which would have made more sense. Um, but the actual connections we have a couple of USBs either side, which you can sort of connect, so sort of external USB devices of any sort. You can maybe add a controller, uh, more memory sort of thing. Um, we've got your is that like a mini HDMI by the looks of it over here? Got a headphone socket, you've got your memory card included here and you've got your power adapters here. Um, unusual sort of style of power adapter, it's not like your usual USB-C. So let's have a quick look at the memory card. So it's a SanDisk Ultra memory card that's in it which came with the device. 32 gig and it's already got quite a lot of games on it. Which is quite cool but it's not massively apparent when you're playing that the games are actually there which I'll show you in a sec. So doing a quick um, size comparison guys, we've got the, the Nintendo Switch sitting next to here and it's pretty much the similar size. Pow Kiddy has got a slightly larger screen but there's not actually much in it, you can see it's pretty similar. And um, without further ado, let's put the, the unit on um, and we can see what it's like. So it's uh, powered by Android 7.0 and it's thankfully it's touch screen. So this is what you see when you, you sort of power it on. You've got the Happy Check uh, Beyond Yenth with his... Uh, Cool little game, Riptide GP2, which is actually really good as well. We're happy to check, it's a bit of a, a questionable site, you can download sort of games at your leisure, and the games actually run really well. I think this is the thing that's surprised me quite a lot about this device, is despite the fact it's probably a bit underpowered, it can and is very capable of playing some of the games very well. But, I found a lot of the apps can be a little bit buggy. Um, I've had RetroArch on here and it's, it's sort of a buggy, um, and there are other apps are kind of similar. This is some of the apps I've downloaded, um, and the performance is pretty good. So, what we're going to look at first, I think we'll look at maybe some of the games that you can see in Happy Check. I mean, I'm not sure this is a <coughs> great thing to have on here, but you can sort of go on here and, and download games um, as you see fit. And there's a lot of really good games in here, um, and a lot of them play really well. Like obviously, you can download Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Um, I don't think the God of War games play good on this, I think it's just way underpowered for it. Um, but yeah, you can see all the games that you've got here. Um, so I play, let's click the, the button that I've downloaded some games. Um, I've got Wipeout, 
Oh, let's see. Let's have a look. This game actually is a particularly difficult game to actually emulate. And it, there is some slowdown in some devices. What I quite like is here you can see the, the X, Y, A, B buttons light up nicely, just like an Xbox controller, which I thought was a nice touch. Um, so here we have um, Ninja Baseball Batman. Let's see if we can turn this sound up slightly. You can see it looks pretty nice. Let's see if we can just select some up. Oh. <laughs> you see the this screen is really impressive. And this game plays exceptionally well and it's not an easy game, there is a, generally a lot of slowdown in other devices that I've played this game on and on this device, it actually plays exceptionally well. And I'm quite impressed with, with how well it actually pl plays, so this unit is definitely surprising me. It's not amazing, the unit is buggy and it has its own issues, but um, some of the games it plays exceptionally well, so it's a pleasant surprise. Anyway, so to jump back, you can just use the touchscreen function and sort of go back. And you've got other options. You can get rid of the, the on-screen sort of display, um, change the, the settings, pictures, just all the usual stuff. So that I'll just quit out of the game, and it takes you straight back. I've not downloaded too many games, but let's have a look at um, Final Fight, which plays particularly impressive too. Ah, oh, Final Fight. Absolutely sounds brilliant. It's a tad loud, I think, sorry. But it sounds fantastic, even though it's obviously those small speakers which sometimes I accidentally cover, it still sounds really good. You can see it, this looks and plays fantastically well, there's no slowdown whatsoever. Um, and this is a top title. The emulation here is, is really good, really good. Anyway. There's a quick sort of play on that. Um, so there are lots of other types of games that you can play in here, um, like Wipeout, this is a PlayStation game and other games, but I'm going to use some of the apps rather than um, playing them through Happy Chick. So you can just jump out and it goes straight back out. So it's, it's pretty nifty and it's only an Android 7.0, but it's still pretty decent performance. Um, Riptide 2 is quite cool, but I'm not going to be playing that. Um, there are other sort of questionable sites here, like Aptotide. I tried putting Google Play on it, but I was getting lots of bugs from it, so I sort of gave it a miss. Um, what I'll have a look at here is a crazy taxi plane on this, which is particularly good. This is obviously playing through an Android app rather than the Dreamcast. I'm not saying tap the screen, but the, the controls obviously work absolutely fine. Uh, background music off. I'm going to turn the background music off, guys, so I'll turn the sound up slightly. I mean, the touchscreen is all absolutely fine. Um, it's quite responsive. You see this large screen looks fantastic on here. All right, let's get it on. So obviously I've turned on, turned off the music. It plays fine, there's no problem, there's no starting with it, I've just turned it off. Um, because you can't actually monetize videos with the, the sort of copyrighted music on it. It's a bit of a pain. The, the trigger buttons that I need to use to sort of start. <laughs> and here we go. So it plays absolutely fine. You know, so there's no slowdown in the, the music. Um, there's no slowdown in sound or nothing. It plays absolutely fantastically well. I think that the analog stick is just a little bit oversensitive right enough, but I'm pretty sure you could change that. Yeah, but it's better than playing that the D-pad is just horrible to actually play. I don't really particularly enjoy playing with the, the, the clicky, squeaky joypad um, D-pad, sorry, but this is the, the only thing I don't really like about this device is this horrible sat D-pad 
So guys, what I'm going to do is we're going to look at some of the harder to emulate stuff that's usually a pain, like N64, PSP and Dreamcast. Um, and it, it's, the results are surprisingly quite good, but it does take a lot of tinkering to get to a decent level of performance. Um, but it does surprise you, um, despite the fact it's so underpowered, it actually has surprising results. Um, but what I'm going to do is I want to put it in the big screen so I'm not sitting being annoying playing it on, on this handheld. But yeah, I'm going to put it on the big screen for you. So guys, this is the unit actually on the TV, just to sort of give you a better look at it. Um, what I want to show is something in the settings in advanced. Um, if you go straight, straight to the bottom about game machine, it says Android 7. There is a switch system here at the bottom, switch system the game console will start, which is down the in the middle here. Which I suspect must be like a dual boot system like the Retroid Pocket 2. Um, but when you press it, there's nothing installed to be able to dual boot into another operating system. So I don't know whether we could actually install another operating system to sort of dual boot into. Um, it's something that probably needs to have a little bit of look into. But see, it's model number X17. Um, and all some details down here, which is interesting. But let's get stuck into some of the harder to emulate games. Okay, guys, what we're going to do is have a look at um, Mupin 64 Plus, which is... Um, Nintendo 64 games. This isn't the, the greatest looking um, app, but it does play the games exceptionally well. We're going to try Super Mario, but need to make sure the button and sort of joystick is all set up properly because it can be a pain, which is one thing that's quite buggy about the, this unit is that the, the control something forgets what buttons they are and it can be annoying. So you don't want to sort of see the, the on screen, you sort of take that away and we can sort of use the controller. Okay, here we go. We're going to be playing Super Mario 64 and it looks absolutely fantastic and plays exceptionally well on this. You see Mario looks, he's got some sheen and shine on his nose. It's like, wow. I have to say, this is probably the best I've seen Super Mario run in, in any other sort of device as well. It's fantastic. Some of the port versions have been really good in the, the devices, but um, this definitely stands out. The graphics and there's... As far as I could tell, there was no flaws. There was no graphical issues and flaws and flickers that we generally do see in some of the, the emulation. And there's relatively no slowdown. I'm, I'm not really detecting anything. It seems particularly good. You can see the, there's no flaw in the graphics. You can see that actually looks and plays really quite impressive. Um, button map's a bit strange, but I mean... It, this is probably some of the best I've probably seen the emulation. There's the unusual... Flickering here, the occasional, but it's not actually too bad at all. In general, it actually looks really good. Maybe have a look, a look at another sort of um, C6, uh, N64 game. So this is Cruising World. Um, it's a driving game. And something this can be a tricky sort of game to emulate and stutters all over the place on some devices. But, um, let's see how it performs. And sometimes the button mapping can be all over the place on this device. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work, you need to sort of mess about. You see we've got actually flickering on the side here, which is a bit strange. I think it was one example, is even though some games play really well, um, other games are a bit strange. Obviously that's quite off-putting, I'm not sure how we can actually play that. Let's see if we can actually fix that. Okay guys, what I've done is I've messed about a little bit um, with the, the settings here. So I've left the resolution setting to the highest quality, native. Uh, what else did I do? Display, no, flicker reduction, I left it the auto detect. Uh, I've left this option here, the RGBA frame skip. Left it no more than two frames. Um, and I've turned some of these options off down the bottom, because you notice it's talking about um, graphical glitches. So all I've got on is a texture. Uh, pixelation reduces and I've turned the, the bottom three off that we're on the alpha test depth test because it's causing flashing and some issues and it seems to have worked so let's go back and we'll play cruising world and you'll, you'll see the difference that it's actually made here this is no um, uh, sort of issues as you can see it's not flashing anymore you've got some pop up at the side um, I'm not really sure if that was there in the original and um, because it plays a lot better now there's no Annoying flashing, and here we are. We, you can probably play this now um, and actually enjoy it without the flickering. Which is actually some difference, isn't it? And it's, it actually plays really, really well. And that, that's definitely the thing about this device that I've found is that it, it's got mixed results. But if you're prepared to spend some time actually working 
um, with the settings and all the different frame skips and graphical glitches, you can probably get a lot of games to work pretty reasonable, especially playable quality, which is, this is definitely playable as we're going to now. Um, speed wise and frame rates are pretty good here. Uh, yeah, but it's one of those out of the box, it can be an absolute plane and you think you've probably got, got something that's just absolutely useless, but you can see a little bit of tinkering in it, it's, it actually produces some decent results. And surprisingly, because this is quite an underpowered um, handheld device, but you can actually get some good results if you're prepared to put the time in to, to get there. But it can be frustrating, I find that the device can be quite buggy at times and, and it's frustrating. But when it works like this, you think, wow, not bad considering the sort of price point. I think it's selling for $150 at the moment. It's not um, available in the UK as I can see at present. So guys, what I'm going to do is show the, the difference um, that some of the games actually work better in the, the M64 Plus app instead. So it's a bit hit and miss and massively frustrating to be honest. Um, but Super Mario 64 doesn't work particularly great in here, but F-Zero X works a lot better. Which is really strange, so it's, it can be frustrating that not all the games work in the same app. So it can be frustrating. So we get F-Zero X. You can actually turn these on-screen sort of buttons off. And I'm really just quickly showing you the how this actually works. I think there's more options in the other app to sort of mess about with the graphical sort of things on it, but I think sometimes it messes about and the performance doesn't quite happen. But this game actually works better in this app. Which kind of proves a point that it's totally hit and miss with all these games. Which app to use, it's so buggy and it's frustrating. So if you're not really wanting to spend a lot of time messing about with this and, and don't want that frustration, then I'm not really sure this is the device for you. This seems to be relatively fine, to be honest. Um, so let's move on to another game. So let's move on to PSP, which was uh, which seems to work quite well in the PPS SPP app. I don't have many games. Um, I've got Ridge Racer. I think you're tougher to emulate games are going to be the same. They're not going to to work like God of War are particularly pretty poor, but I guess you could probably muck about and again and get results. And I like the way that just off the PSP it completely fills the screen here. And it looks particularly good. Actually, oh, so it's better using the analog stick rather than the D-pad. I think the D-pad is horrible. I, I'm trying to use the analog stick for most of the games that I've got, um, and most of the times it's fine. And you can see this actually playing extremely well. Tricky game to play. You can up the, the speed of it um, and mess about with it if you think it's going too slow. Um, it can actually help you. It's actually struggling along a little bit there. Dreamcast. Now Dreamcast is a little bit hit and miss. Some games work better than Redream um, and some don't, but I found that Redream are probably not particularly amazing on here. Um, the better app is probably Raycast, um, which I need to download. Uh, let's have a quick look at Redream and I'll show you the differences. I've got a few games installed, um, so I'll give you an option, it's our Soul Calibur. Generally, there's a bit of slowdown and it becomes a little bit uh, unplayable. It does look really, really good. This is a uh, region which is generally a decent um, and probably one of the best for um, Dreamcast emulation, but on here it's not particularly amazing. There's a lot of slowdown. It, it's really difficult to control, I don't know what the button mapping is doing either, um, and it can be a little bit frustrating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put recast on and show you what the, the differences are, and the differences are quite startling to be honest. Okay guys, let's have a look at Raycast, um, which does perform a lot, lot better than Redream on here. Um, but it is quite buggy and it has its own issues, but it, the games themselves, once they're up and running, work so much better. 
The first thing you probably need to do is make sure that your joypad is set up properly, and that's the thing that's probably the the most frustrating part. So if you look at um, it says J Link Joy Play Game sort of down the screen there. Um, it, sometimes it defaults to port uh, B, but if you make sure that's port A, and then you may need to sort of map the individual buttons um, before you go and play it. Um, so if you do that, then it should be okay. Now let's start Soul Calibur and you'll see the difference between this and Redream. And you, immediately you'll see the on-screen uh, sort of layout, but that disappears if you don't touch anything. It goes away after about five seconds. I say it's gone now, and you should be able to play without that on the screen. If you start touching buttons, it generally tends to stay there and it's quite annoying, so hopefully that will go away. So let's get stuck and then we'll play Soul Calibur. You can see it looks and plays so much better, um, and if you get the joypad set up properly and the triggers, it is such an amazingly decent game here. And this is actually really surprising me about this device. It's not really, it really shouldn't be capable of playing a lot of these games, but um, if you set them up right, it, the, the results are extremely impressive. There's a lot of uh, sort of handhelds. So our emulators have definitely struggled to play this game. This has um, blown me away. If you like your Dreamcast games and you can put up with a, a little bit of tinkering here and there, you are going to be blown away with the results here. I think this is particularly impressive. And this is definitely one of my favourite um, uh, Dreamcast games of all time. Absolutely love it and played it quite a lot back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, so let's move on to some of the other ones. I'll give you an idea of, of how decent the emulation is here. This one as well, um, it, it does have issues on a lot of other devices with the sort of slowdown. But um, on here it's actually not bad at all. It's, de it's definitely better than Redream. Which surprised me because Redream is probably the, the emulator to have on PC. But on Android it's definitely not quite the same performance levels. But recast itself, I mean, even though it's, the emulation is so much better here, um, it is buggy as in it, it, it does have its own set of issues. I mean, it definitely took me a, a while to get things to working properly and getting past the, the, the sad bugs. But once you do it, it's, it's, it's certainly... And this is really good. The D-pad I don't even use because it's just horrible, so I use the, the analog thing and it's perfect. It really is really good. Really surprised me because a lot of emulators have played these on. Uh, who just struggle? They just sound terrible. They don't play amazingly uh, well, and it's off-putting. I mean, I don't think anybody wants to play these games when you know they're not perfect. Um, it's it's just a nightmare, really, isn't it? But yeah, this is really good, really good for the price point. Amazing. I mean, I got this device. Um, I think it retails somewhere between 130, 150 pounds. Um, it's not available in the UK as yet. I got this device at a reasonable price from Something New Reviews. Um, I'll leave their link of their YouTube channel in the description if you're interested in, in looking at their videos. But they also do game reviews as well, which is probably their main thing. Um, and I'll leave a link for those as well. I'll just like to say thanks for Something New Reviews for um, giving me this device at a decent price. Thank you. Not bad at all guys, let's have a look at another one quickly. So, Metropolis Street Racer. Now, MSR is, is, this is probably my favourite Dreamcast game ever. It was one I played probably the most and I loved it. But it's been, even though it emulates okay, um, the in-game music doesn't seem to work in a lot of devices. It just stutters or stops or doesn't play at all. But surprisingly and amazingly, it works perfectly on this device and it's, again, it's blown me away and surprising me. So here we have MSR and see the, the in-car radio is working. And you probably need to spend some time mapping the controls. I, I find that by default the, the triggers don't seem to map, but um, if you spend some time actually going into the settings and map the controls, um, they'll work fine, which I've got working perfectly here. And I reckon this is the game that has to be using the triggers for the accelerator. And break. See, it looks fine. There's, there's. I don't see any massive issues going on. 
um, and the in-car music radio was working, which was a big, massive part of this game for me, um, and absolutely loved it. Definitely real surprised at the results. I mean, I, I think these days I really don't expect much, and, and when you do get a decent result with this, surprisingly on this device, it's definitely very welcome. Anyway, guys, you sort of see the Dreamcast performance is really, really good. So here's another thing: um, you can use Steam Link if you've got games on Steam. You can link up the this device to this your Steam account and stream over your uh, over the network on your PC. Um, the performance is pretty good, but you need a decent Wi-Fi. You can see I've got a slow connection, um, but I really need to. If I was sitting playing next to the modem, it would be fine. Um, and I, I see I played Half Life, and it was it was really good. So you can do this if if you so wish, which is obviously reminds you a little bit like the Steam Deck a little bit, but you're going to be paying a heck of a lot more for that device, that's for sure. So guys, I would probably recommend downloading the relative apps for games um, rather than RetroArch because that app, even though it works for some, it can be buggy and it can be quite annoying and frustrating. And it's still like here we, we got uh, Streets of Rage 3 which plays really well. I think most games are going to play well on here and you can touch up the graphics where you see I've just, uh, messed about with them a little bit. They look a little bit maybe more colourful and snazzier. But yeah, it plays really well like you would expect along with it. Pretty much everything else from the 16 bit and 8 bit bear, but again, you're going to have to spend some time maybe setting them up and tinkering about. But very capable device, which is totally surprising. So, guys, this is also a PlayStation game Wipeout. Um, I'm pretty sure all PlayStation games should play quite well. Well, I think like most devices, that you might have some trouble with some. You need a little bit of tweaking, and you might get some good results. And as I've shown in this video, a little bit of tweaking and perseverance, you probably can get some of these games to run really well. Which really probably shouldn't happen in this device. It's really not the most powerful device, but it's very, very capable, and it's definitely surprised me. Again, a few. Um, don't like, don't mind tinkering with stuff and messing about with to get things working properly. Then you'll probably enjoy the experience of using this. It is a massive, massive handheld. It's got a huge screen, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, and the results are pretty, pretty decent at a decent price range. I mean, you probably could spend a lot, lot more, and not even get half as decent co uh, quality from here. But yeah, if you want a, a straight out the box experience, then. I don't think this is the device for you. I, I'd recommend probably going for something else that's a little bit more user friendly straight out of the box. I mean the Android side of things can be frustrating, which I found obviously with the Retroid Pocket 2, which had some frustrating issues with it, but that was massively underpowered and didn't have touchscreen. And but the fact that we've got all these here, a little bit better Android and touchscreen. Um so really I think you could probably get a lot more out of this device than what I've shown on this video. Um, leave, please like and subscribe, leave some comments of anything you want me to display in maybe some future videos. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you again next time. Bye for now guys.